meet you. Do you like South Africa? Yeah. What are the implications for your business, Zane? Sorry, Molly, you first want to comment, sorry. Uh, so I think the, the implications for our business are huge because especially when you say that the moment we look back and things that oppose each other, um, we don't do well at problem solving. But I have another question for you. So firstly, I should say welcome back home because you know that Africa holds the cradle of humankind. So this is where you really belong. So you should come home soon, I hope. <laughs> so the first thing is that when you look at Africa as a continent, it's a rich continent, its youth is under, you know, 60% of the population is under, uh, is in 60% of the population is youth. And then of course, it's very resourced as a continent and every, the whole world is looking at, at Africa. It's been invaded many times, not successfully though. However, when you think of the consciousness that we hope for through algorithms and endorhythms, do you think that that consciousness will close this divide that we have between the first and the third world? I want to say that's almost a bit more of a geopolitical question. I don't think so because our we already have the consciousness right now and we can think about how others are affected by our decisions, but our first and third world are still not working together even in our world. So uh, our first world countries uh, neglect our third world countries and even in our past uh, our countries have uh, started to abuse the African continent uh, in fact Europe uh, Europe and most has uh, really been at fault for dividing the continent and uh, well uh, you know the Europeans scramble for Africa so I feel like uh, the first world and third world have not had good relations and even with our consciousness nowadays things still haven't gone in that much better so uh, I don't think that it will be much improved the relations between first and third world even by consciousness.